before I do any more wood processing, I'm going to sharpen the blade. So I wanted to do a quick video on sharpening a harvester blade. And in this case, I'm going to use my electric sharpening tool and I'm going to do it right on the machine. Now if you have a bench type chain sharpener that's a totally different process. I'm not going to cover that yet. This is strictly the in the field sharpening of the saw blade. I'm also going to cover proper blade tension, tooth angle, and raker depth. On the Oregon Products website, there is a section on sharpening harvester chains. I will link that below the video, and it shows the proper tooth angle, the 10 degree down angle, and the raker depth. So I will put some uh, stills up and I will show you the uh, Oregon website. To sharpen the saw on the machine, the first thing I do is pull the saw down. Now obviously you're going to make sure the machine is not running when you do this. Alright, so what I do is I stand on the operator platform and I reach over with the pickeroon and I pull the saw down. I just bring it all the way down. There we go. Now unless the chain is really, really loose, I don't worry about adjusting the chain tension just yet. Right now, it's it's actually pretty good. Could be a, just a little bit tighter, but you don't want these too tight. So on the Cord King 1820, the battery is just in front of the splitting ram. So I'm just attaching my alligator clips directly to the battery. And this is the uh, Oregon chain grinder, which I'll show you here in a sec. Okay. Oregon. And it is a uh, 12 volt, 55 watt, 25,000 RPM grinder. It's a fixed RPM. You can't change it. And apparently it's made by a company called Blount, Portland, Oregon. I've used this for a few months now and I really like it. It has your uh, the tooth angle gauge right here. It has a collet and a lock to unscrew the collet. And in order to unscrew the collet, you need a wrench. I took the, it came with a, its own wrench, which I didn't like. So I put my own uh, nine millimeter wrench on here. It's a depth setting right here. So you just loosen that screw and you can move your guide up and down. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple. So now we're going to plug this in. It just uses a standard uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. And the, uh, the alligator clips have the female part of that. So just plug that in. Make sure it comes on. Okay. So now we are going to thread this up now we 
lay this up over the, over the engine here and slide that in over there where we can reach it. Trying not to drop it down into the uh, front of the infeed chain because there's a big hole there. So just carefully lay it down. We'll slide the uh, measuring gauge out of the way. All right, now we'll pass the cord underneath the blade. Now on these blades, there are two teeth that face the same direction. In other words, two consecutive teeth. So right here they are, one, two, and they're both facing the same direction. Now we're going to do a 30 degree angle and 10 degrees down. So trying to uh, get an exact 10 degree down angle, I'm not going to be that particular about it. I just know that it has to be approximately 10 degrees down. And then we're gonna we're gonna sharpen them this way. I'm gonna go through all this on one side, and then we'll flip this around and do the other side. And then we will check the rakers. So get my feet comfortable here. And here we go. Now the reason I'm moving back and forth is to keep the wear of the stone even. next thing I need to check is the raker depth. But first I have to go get my raker tool and a file. Alright, now for this, this is a raker gauge. The raker depth on, the, on this harvester blade is 50 thousandths. So what you do is you lay the gauge on top of the teeth and you feel across the top here. And right there is your raker. That's your raker. And what that does is it sets the depth of cut. So as you sharpen the teeth, the tooth height decreases slightly. And when that happens, the raker is now higher than it should be. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to feel across the top and so far, this first one seems fine. Okay, if it's not fine, then you take a flat file and you run it across until it's flush with the raker gauge. All right, so again, I'm gonna start here with my, my double set of teeth. So I know where I'm at. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna measure these. And that one's all right. Maybe I don't have to do any of these, but I'm gonna check them all. Now here, I'm not wearing gloves because I need to be able to feel what I'm doing. But, so do be careful when you're doing this. So 
So I'm just laying that down until it's flat on the tooth. Now this blade has only been sharpened one time and I don't believe it's time to worry about the rakers. But I just want to be sure. I want the I want the blade to be as close to factory as it can be. And the reason I say that is because when this blade is new, it cuts extremely well. And I really want to be able to duplicate that. Because once you start grinding and filing on your blade, you're changing all the angles and everything. In spite of your best efforts, things are going to change a little bit. That one's just a tad bit high. We're going to give that a quick touch with the file. That's all it takes. Just a little bit. A couple strokes with the file is all it needed. Brings it right back down to where it needs to be. Have to be getting near the end here. Oh, I'm at the end. Okay. Yep, I'm at the end. Okay, so that's it. That's how you would. That's how you check your rakers. And adjust your rakers. Now the only other thing I do is I look at where the where the the bar and the chain intersect here where they touch and you want to make sure that there's no burrs building up um, it's easier to do this with the bar off the machine but if you push the chain over to one side and feel it you'll know because it'll be a sharp a very sharp edge. So what I tend to do is periodically flip the bar over. Um, I think doing it when you change and put a new chain on should be sufficient. Some people like to flip them over every time you sharpen. I don't know. That's a, That seems like a lot. But again, it depends on the use and You'll, you need to check to make sure there's no nasty burrs there. If there's a nasty burr, then you have to pull the bar off and file those burrs down and get rid of that. Alright, so chain tension is really quite good. I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna tighten this because on these harvester bars you want a little bit of slack in this chain. Not too much, you don't want it to fly off, but enough. And there is a measurement, I believe, and I will have to look that up because I don't know it off the top of my head. But right about there is good. Okay. So that is how you sharpen the harvester blade while it's on the machine. There is no comfortable way to get into this splitter box. Well, you can get in it, but sitting in there and trying to sharpen the, the saw blade is definitely uncomfortable. So, my lovely wife made this nice little platform. And it's just a makeshift thing. And it sits right on the very edge of the splitter box. And now I have a place to sit and not be in pain. And it works very well. One final note about doing this. <laughs> 
two final notes. Note number one, do not leave your grinder in the infeed conveyor. Make sure you remove that. Don't, don't be like Mr. Bozo and leave it in there and start feeding logs. It's not good for the grinder. And it doesn't do any favors for the saw. The final note on sharpening like this is notice that the bar is down. Well, that's where it's going to stay until you start the machine and operate the hydraulics. There is just no way to lift this bar back up and put it back into position without the machine running. I've tried. I can't do it. It just it won't go back up. And uh, so be aware that the bar is now down. When you go to start the machine, the blade is coming on. Whether you like it or not, it's going to come on with the machine. So the first thing you do is start the machine and get over to the controls and put the blade up. I hope you enjoyed my harvester blade sharpening lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate. Hit that like button, leave some comments, let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also thank you for all my new subscribers. I really appreciate it. So that's it for now, signing off.